Howdy y'all. Welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today's video is going to be kind of cool. I've actually been talking with a subscriber over the past two or three months about the range ferry process and getting his arrows put together for this year. And so I'm in the process of editing his videos that he sent over. But I wanted to do a little intro into this and before he dives into his arrow tuning process, um, he had a public service announcement that I think is very important to share with everyone because I think it just shows you how fragile life can be and how quickly you can lose somebody in an instant. And I think it reiterates what I believe in most and that is number one thing is safety. So we'll go ahead and watch his PSA here and then I will dive into the details of his setup, his bow, his arrow, how he's tuning it, and then I will let him go through his process and show you his results. Hope you all enjoy this video. Out here today, I'm just trying to take my mind off of a few things today. I'm doing these tunes here, tuning my hunting arrows because hunting season's around the corner. I just want to make a public service announcement. See a friend of mine last night, straight damn redneck, young boy, young buck. Started he was going to play with his pistol last night. Dropped the clip out of it, pointed it at his girl. She said not to point it at her, you know. He said, oh, why? It's not loaded. Pointed it to his head and took his life. Don't be stupid. If you don't know what the hell you're doing with a firearm, go take lessons. Seriously. Now, sadly, 22 years old and his life is gone. Feel for his family. So I know I don't get a lot of views on all my videos, nor do I have a ton of subscribers, but if his message here can save at least one life, I think it's worth posting it multiple times. So again, please be safe out there when you're using any sort of gun, weapon, anything, and just make sure you know how to operate it. All right, so that being said, we are going to dive into Tim's process here. He's gonna take us through a little bit of his setup and how he tunes his arrows. And I'm actually gonna read through some of the stats he sent me on his bow setup and arrow setup, and I'll throw them up on the screen as well as I read through these. So he's using the 2021 Bowtech solution. He talks about it a little bit in the video. His draw weight is at 69 pounds, shooting on the performance setting. He has a 28 inch draw length. He's using a true ball wrist release. He does his paper tuning distances at six feet on his final test. When he was knock tuning and assembling the shafts, he was at 21 feet. And then for his arrows, he was using the Grizzly Stick Momentum Shaft, factory cut to 29 inches, 240 spine, using their 70 grain outsert system. It comes out to about 31 inches and 29% FOC. His total arrow weight looks like it varies from 739 to 745. And he thinks the variance is coming from his field tip weights. So hopefully with his broadheads, that'll even out a little bit. But most of them seem to be right around the 740 mark. He is using the standard knocks that come with this shaft. One thing about these shafts too is they're actually tapered, which if you follow the Ashby rules, his 12 rules, number eight, I think, talks about the shaft profile and how a tapered shaft would work a little bit better. For fletchings, he used the True Flight 2 inch shield cut at a right wing feather on a two degree helical from Three Rivers Archery. So I'm going to go ahead and let him walk you through his process. Easy hey, man, got one for you. Turning on my trusty grain scale. This particular arrow, 739. That silver spot is the balance point. And 
These are those Grizzly Stick TDTs I was telling you about. This is the lightest arrow. My heaviest is 745. Now, you're supposed to take the measurement from end of shaft to knock. You're just going to have to take my word for it. I had the factory cut them at 29 for me because I didn't want the human error on this one. So the shafts are R29. <clears throat> With the outsert on there, they become 32. But any measurement will tell you that it's supposed to be from the end of the shaft minus the outsert. So I'm lined up there. Bring it down. About 24 and 5 eighths, but I put it in as 24 and 3 quarter. It gives me 35% front of center. Okay, Z man, out here tuning the arrows. This is what I've got. I went from lightest to heaviest. Number one, two, three, number four, number five, number six. The heaviest. Look at that. Darn close. Okay, I'm going to do a little tuning with the Botex solution and see if we can't get these tears out and bring them all a little bit closer together. Okay, I took arrow number two, and if you remember, it was the closest one to being level. It took multiple shots and adjusting, but I finally got it level now to work my right to left magic. Okay, after doing the horizontal, I went back and shot each one. They're coming in a little cleaner. Two still looks a little hazy. Three's a little hazy. And four. Five, not too bad. Six is still damn near a perfect bullet hole. This is why I love that deadlock cam technology. See number four. That's what I started with. Of course, I uh, got bad and worse and worse because I was turning the wrong way and then I started bringing it in. And this is when I really got to fine tuning. So it was a little high, a little out. Here, looks good, but still just a stitch to the left. Here, still just a stitch to the left. Oops, went too far. Bringing her back. Oh, that looks perfect except for a little high, so I adjusted my breast up. And then boom, there it is. Bullet hole, boys and girls. Out of number four. Next, we'll see how all six of them shoot. Okay, final result. So, obviously, a little bit of work a little bit of this could be me six you see i got well that's supposed to be a question mark even though it looks like three kicking a little left there uh kicking still left so that uh, was definitely on me one's kicking a little left two is a little left three is a little left four see now before it was a bullet hole now look at it Five shows a little left. Six is left. Interesting. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this takes a lot of work. Oh, by the way, make sure you have a uh, broadhead target or a target that can stop a crossbow bolt if you're shooting these heavies. And uh, lastly, make sure you don't miss. Because that son of a gun is embedded. And just to give you a range of comparison that is the field tips so yeah she's embedded pretty deep it's gonna take a little work to get that one out but it's gonna take me a lot of work to get all of these darn things shooting right so back at it okay boys and girls went through it again made a slight adjustment that's what I got on the first round. Made another slight adjustment. I think a lot of this is actually me. That is not. But 
here's the weird thing. You see number six tear, and you see number four tear. There's four, there's six. Look at them all. Six straight, five straight, four little wonky, three straight, two straight, one is straight. Four is the only one that is a little wonky. So, at this point, I'm going to call that a wrap until I get the broadheads on, but we're looking at another month away before I start broadhead tuning these. And then we'll see which ones are the ones that I'm going to accept. Uh, <laughs> my deer has had it see he's pretty chomped up you ought to see the backside and uh folks i've only hit it four times with broadheads all of that is field points there's my backside yeah my poor doe is dead at any rate yeah botech solution deadlock technology it's great did not have to move my rest left or right, so I kept a uh, retained center shot. All I had to do was move it up and down. And that easy V, boys and girls, that thing is the greatest for hunting. At any rate, there you have it. I hope you all found this video interesting. I think it just goes to show that I'm not the only one that sometimes struggles at this process, that it's actually a lot more time consuming than most of these videos and people talk about it being. So I thought this video would be pretty interesting and hopefully helpful for a lot of people out there that are going through this process for the first time. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'm sure Tim will answer you, and if I can answer you, I can uh, do that as well. But I appreciate you all watching this video, and hopefully uh, I can finally get outside with all this rain and all the mosquitoes and try and finish up tuning my arrows as well. Thanks for watching and see y'all next week.